So a first point is to step back and say, in the early 90s when I started to do field experiments, the lay of the land at that point was you had an idea, you raced back to your office and you wrote down a theoretical model, and then you downloaded mounds and mounds of data and you beat up those data to try to say something causal. So my approach is fundamentally different and the approach of um, everyone here at this conference is fundamentally different than the traditional approach. It's more along the lines of let's look at the world and let's go into the world and generate new data to answer interesting and important questions. So the questions that I've been thinking about recently are social issues like why do people discriminate? What causes inner city schools to fail? Why do people give to charitable causes? Why do men earn more money than women in labor markets for doing the exact same job? Let's talk about a firm that I've been working for for nearly two years called Lyft. So Lyft is a competitor in the United States with Uber and, and for full disclosure, I worked at Uber as chief economist for two years before I joined Lyft. So I've been at Lyft now for nearly two years as a chief economist. Things we're working on there are, are aspects such as what's the value of time? Now when you think about it, in an economics model, one of the very most important elements is your time. Why? because it's our scarcest asset. So how do we value that? Well, it's a really hard economic problem to try to think about using a field experiment to value time. Here's what typically happens. You call a car and the nearest car to you is dispatched. You see a price and you see how long it's gonna take for that car to get to you. Now what we did at Lyft is we didn't send you the closest car all the time. Sometimes we sent the third closest car or the fifth closest car. Now what we've effectively done is we've randomized the time for that car to get to you and we can look at whether people cancel the trip or not. And in that way it allows us to understand how are people valuing both time and money. Because on top of that, we value the, the changes in price. So we vary price and we see how people's um, cancellation rates or request rates change with price effects. Now, that's important scientifically because we finally have a good measure that we can give to government officials on should we build a new road um, that will cost a billion dollars if it saves everyone five minutes a day. Th these, are, these are kind of evergreen type question. Should we build a new bridge? Should we have a public ferry, et cetera, et cetera. Now, for Lyft that's important too because when you think about the optimal dispatch, you have an estimate of where the demand will happen, but we're not sure where we should put cars unless we know how people trade off time and money. 